morning, good afternoon, YouTube family. I'm Ryan Jordan, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about core beliefs again and self acceptance. So, first, we're going to start with a little bit of what we discussed on our previous video. You can check it out on my channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment below and let me know if this resonated with you. So, what are core beliefs? We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Today I want to go into about what our core beliefs are and how they're related to self-acceptance. If you watched yesterday's video or the earlier video, um, you would have learned more about self-esteem and how that's connected to our core beliefs. So don't forget to go back and watch that one. So what are core beliefs? It's a great question. Um, what's the purpose and what's the benefits of them? Well, we're going to get into a little bit of that and what it has to do with. So core beliefs are basic beliefs about ourselves, other people, and the world we live in. They are things we hold on to um, that we believe to be absolute truths deep down underneath all our surface thoughts. Essentially, core beliefs determine how you perceive and interpret the world. They sit in the basement of your mind. When something happens, your mind will open the basement and consult the core beliefs that is most likely to keep you safe and defend you against the world. Now, these core beliefs are buried in the subconscious or the unconscious mind. And uh, if you'd like to book a free call with me, you can see my link below and um, we can learn to uncover those core beliefs and I can further explain what the benefit of that is. Um, core beliefs are very strong, very convincing. They are full of uh, per persuasion and conviction. A core belief is something you accept as true without question. That means you can expect that every day it will seem just as true as it was the day before. Your beliefs are seated deep within you, deep within the mind. So your mind lives your life around them without thinking about them questioning them or even being aware of them. Now, true awareness would be able to be aware of those core beliefs, true awakening, true authenticity, truth would allow you to access this. So truth with questioning yourself and looking at your own core beliefs are absolutely vital. You can use the left and right brain technique by picking up a piece of paper and getting a pen and ask, what are my core beliefs or what am I feeling at the moment? And on the piece of paper with your left hand, your non-dominant hand, if uh, you're right-handed, then your non-dominant would be your left. And if you're left-handed, your non-dominant would be right. So this way we can access the subconscious, the unconscious with the conscious state in the conscious state, in awakened state. So what you want to do is write, pick up the pen and write and ask yourself, what am I feeling? Or where am I at right now? Or how do I feel? And write four words with your left hand. And then write four words with your right hand. And go ahead and look at what was the first word you wrote with the left hand and what was the first word you wrote with the right hand. So everything you wrote with the left hand will be the subconscious, so the non-dominant hand. This can help us to uncover our and develop and increase our emotional quotient and help us to uncover our core beliefs or what we're experiencing at the moment. I call it ref, left, right brain, subconscious, unconscious, conscious healing. So core beliefs are also really important to a person because they determine to what degree you see yourself as worthy, safe, confident, powerful, and loved. Negative beliefs about yourself are deadly to your self-acceptance and self-esteem. Your core beliefs have a huge influence on your sense of belonging and the basic picture of how you're viewed and treated by others. Now, core beliefs as childish thinking patterns may come across like this. Core beliefs dictate the rules we live by. Everybody has them. They're formed in the early years of our lives, typically before eight years old, and they are based on our thoughts about our experiences from eight years old and younger, about the things we see in other people, and about the advice uh, others give us while we were growing up. I know, uh, I've definitely, I can resonate with that. Because core beliefs are formed early in life, they are steeped in childlike adolescent thinking. So there's nothing wrong with adolescent thinking, but one should be aware that this thinking lacks the insight and understanding that comes with greater life experiences. So for example, adolescent thinking can sometimes be like this. 
ignoring the consequences. I mean, we've all done that. We favor immediate gratification over long-term goals. We rely on stereotypes or prejudices. We can be very self-centered or egocentric. We can use motive or subjective rationales rather than being objectively logical. We perceive anger as strong and overvalue aggression as a means to solve problems. We lack practicality and flexibility. Um, for example, we are less able to consider and integrate opposing or conflicting ideas. This is why it is important to acknowledge our core beliefs and try to consciously change them to a healthier, more adult thinking style. So core beliefs and self-acceptance are something that are hand in hand. Core beliefs have a direct impact on the way we perceive the world and interpret what happens. They color our judgments of others and also our self-judgments. They formulate the rules you live by every day. For this reason, negative core beliefs can have a huge effect on our self-acceptance, our self-worth, and our self-esteem. A negative core belief might look something like this. I am not good enough, but the supportive belief would be people would not like me if they knew the truth about me. Hmm. A corresponding surface thought might then say, I don't think I'll go to that party. I don't know anyone there and would feel nervous and shy. On the, under, on the other hand, positive core beliefs affirm that you are good enough, do try, and you can make it. A positive core belief might look like this. I am capable and competent. Supportive belief. I could do my job well, as well as any other person, and my colleagues appreciate that. A, sur a surface thought might then say, I could ask for a raise because I know I'm worth it. And don't forget, core beliefs often get distorted by trauma. And if you'd like, again, once I, if you're further in or just tuning in a little later to the video, you can book a free call with me to help to uncover this. So this is, this is more so when the person is young. In response to hurt or rejection, a person may come to see him or herself as flawed or maybe you feel unworthy. This is true for neglect also. If no one mirrored your value back to you, you may simply fail to see it. It's a cycle and it's either positive or vicious. When you tell yourself constantly that you're not good enough, you focus on evidence that it is true and discount the positives. You understandably feel worse and worse and eventually convince yourself that it's true that you're unworthy, that you have no self-esteem. You feel hopeless and de demotivated to try to change things. Sometimes this leads us into the depression, the anxiety, bipolarness, or uh, multiple personalities, which we all have. On the other hand though, if you remember the times you've succeeded, that you worked really hard and you did well, or connected with others, you are convincing yourself that you're good enough. You're much more likely to feel hopeful and motivated and thus give yourself more opportunities to disprove negative core beliefs. The more positive beliefs will be confirmed and solidified instead. It is in this way that core beliefs are the very foundation of your self-worth, your self-acceptance and your self-esteem and your self-validation and your self-love. They dictate what you can and cannot do. They are your rules. They decide how you interpret the world. They are part of your self-talk. Changing core beliefs takes a lot of time and effort, but it can be done. So what do some core beliefs look like? Well, a core belief about yourself is always an I statement, as in I am unlovable. A belief such as nobody loves me is a supporting belief. A prediction about what others will do or have done that you have as a result of the core belief. You may say, but it's true. Nobody does love me. It may be that if it were not for the negative core belief, you would have been able to accept the love and be loved. It's possible that the negative core belief itself is what helped other people to react the way that they did. This then gave the core belief the appearance of being true, a self-fulfilling prophecy. A core belief about others or the world takes the same format. 
but about the outside, for example. People are, or the world is. Some core beliefs and supportive beliefs might be that support this is I am bad. I can't do anything right, you might say. The core belief might be I am smart. And you may say, I will succeed if I try. The core belief may also be I am unlovable. And the supportive belief to that for you maybe nobody will ever appreciate me another one would be core belief would be people are untrustworthy something you might say is people will take advantage of me and hurt me if they have a chance another one would be would the world is dangerous and not safe so you may say something like i need to really protect myself so we always have to look at what it is we're saying in the conscious state by allowing us to enter the subconscious with left and right brain writing where I talked about earlier in the video and you can go back and check that out. So identifying your core beliefs. You can do this with something called the downward arrow technique and by questioning why, why do I feel this way? If this were true, what does this mean to me? If that were true, what would that mean to you and what would be so bad about it? And uh, you can look this up online called the downward arrow technique and it goes along like that. If this were true, what would this mean to me? So if this were true that let's say I said to my parents as a child that I feel unloved and unworthy and I, I, I don't think anyone likes me. Well, if that were true, what would that mean to me? Well, that would mean that I'm not valued. Oh. So we base our needs, our values are based, well, how we value ourselves are based on our needs getting met. But we must first uncover the core beliefs within that. So that's what I wanna share with you. Check out my next videos. I'm gonna be keep doing videos every day. Um, they'll be coming out at different times. And don't forget to sign up for a free call with me as well. So don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and comment below if this resonated with you. Thank you to my YouTube family. And again, I'm Ryan Jordan. Namaste.